Welcome to another transfer roundup. Tyrese Campbell is where we begin being linked with a move to Sheffield United. Tyrese Campbell, he's 24. His birthday is in December. He's six foot. He's a striker who can play on the wing, which could be useful with our new formation. He is left footed. He is a free agent and strong rumours linking him with a move to beautiful downtown Bramall Lane. Now, he is the son of the late Kevin Campbell, a very popular, by all accounts, very kind man, and of course, a really good striker in his day. Tyrese began his career with Manchester City's academy. Now get this, he turned down the chance to turn professional with City in the summer of 2016. He instead thought he'd get more opportunities, and I think this has been proven to be correct, at Stoke City. So he went there, and it was a tribunal fee that was set, £1.75 million, that tribunal fee. And on the 31st of January 2019, Campbell, after being at Stoke for a few years and doing very well, actually, in their youth setup, was loaned to Shrewsbury Town for the remainder of that League One season, where he bagged five times in 15 games. His performance for the Shrews earned him the EFL Young Player of the Month Award for February of 2019. 2019, but injuries would be an issue and injuries are always worth looking at for any player that we're linked with he hasn't had too many injuries but in 2020 a very serious knee injury for Stoke City when playing against Cardiff City on the 8th of December ended his entire season he was out for 10 months not easy to come back from that his best season was 2019-20 for Stoke 33 appearances nine goals he's never actually managed double figures he did also score nine in a season for the Potters in the 22-23 season, but that was in 41 games. Last season, he managed just three goals in 23 league games, but he had a hip injury, which kept him out for nearly a month. His career totals look like this, 188 appearances, 43 goals. Remember, that's primarily as a striker, but we will do a breakdown in just a moment of the positions he's played in. He has represented England at under-20 level very well, actually. Uh, two caps, two goals. You can't get better than that. Let's go through that breakdown then of positions he's played. So centre-forward, 142 times he has started in that centre-forward, that striker position, and in 142 starts, six assists, 56 goals. Not terrible numbers. Playing as a winger, we'll first look at the right wing, 36 appearances there, 13 goals, 11 assists. Again, those aren't bad numbers. From the left, he is left-footed as a left-winger. He's not played there as many times. 19 left-wing appearances, 7 goals, 6 assists. He's played as a second striker three times, scoring once, and an attacking midfielder twice with two assists. I wanted to get the opinions of some Stoke City fans. One described him as lazy. Not a striker that will score goals, turning circle of a ship, uh, as SHIP, and not a striker you'd want. Darren, another Stoke fan and a friend of mine said, and not the same since injury, went on form a good finisher and prefers the central role, not out left. When on his game, a good finisher though needs to be involved and not drift. Recently not scored as expected and will not be a huge miss for Stoke. Uh, Miles Parrish on Twitter said, not a great signing in my opinion, lazy, often clumsy. Get him back at his best, though, and he will bang in goals. So a bit of a mixed report there. Let's move on to Joe Worrell. Again, another we've been strongly linked with for a long time. Joseph Adrian Worrell, 27 years young, a right-footed central defender, six foot four, a Nottingham lad who came through the Nottingham Forest youth setup and played for the first team. Of course, that's every fan's dream. He enjoyed three loan spells, Dagenham and Redbridge, Rangers in Scotland, and Besiktas in Turkey. It's the standard three. It's the holy trio. Everyone enjoys their, their three loan spells at, at, at those clubs. He also represented England at youth level and captained the England squad that won the Toulon tournament in 2017. I'm very pleased with the way I said Toulon. On the 4th of August 2022, Worrell was named Forest captain for their season ahead. That was a 2022-23 Premier League season. He has got that captaincy in him. Could be needed. I mean, let me ask you this question. Who would you say right now will be Sheffield United's captain? Pop that in the comments. He is a centre-back and nothing else. You know, he's an out-and-out centre-back. The man lives and breathes defending. He played emergency left-back, if you're really going to push me on this, once in his career. But don't think for 
one second he'd ever play there for United. He's a stopper and a good one. This could be a replacement for or a complement to Anel Ahmed Hodzic. If we look at his career appearances, 282, seven goals. If we break it down, Forrest, he's played 226 times, Rangers 32, Dagenham and Redbridge 15, and Besiktas 9. He's had a few injuries. He had a rib fracture, kept him out for 20 days, a calf problem, same amount of time. Um, he was out with the coronavirus as well at one point. I um, can't really look at that. Uh, I mean, anyone could have got that. Uh, broke, although I never did. I think I'm, I'm, I never have, I should say, touch wood. Uh, broken foot, 101 days out with that nasty stuff. An Achilles tendon irritation, it's being called online, 25 days. And uh, he, had a, he had an illness that kept him out whilst at Rangers for 35 days. But uh, when I looked at transfer market, it just said, ill and uh, I'm not going to press for any more on that. Let's look at his attributes. He's got a good jumping reach. He is excellent in the air. He's aggressive. He's tough in the tackle. He's decent positioning. He's got good passing, uh, brave, a leader who works hard for the team, good stamina, good work rate. He's also strong. He's been described by one Forest fan I spoke to as not the fastest, but definitely the most determined. Now, I watched a fair bit of him and felt that he just does the simple things well. Nothing flash, and perhaps that's what we need. A no-nonsense centre-back. It's been a while. Probably a proper no-nonsense centre-back. You'd probably have to go back to... I mean, Egan in his absolute peak. Chris Morgan in his absolute peak. But anyway, Worrell reads the game well, can bring the ball forward if needed, but that is not his natural game. He's far better at getting in front of his man and making an interception, or just interceptions because of the way he reads the game. He's not going to be an overlapping centre-back that we may have said, you know, goodbye to that anyway. And if we do bring that style back, he'd be the new Egan rather than Basham, sort of in the centre rather than on the right-hand side of that. If there's a deep free kick that needs thumping long, he's the man to take it. I saw countless clips of him doing this, and it was like watching a goal kick. Thunderous. Boom. Uh, he's also not afraid to try and play a long pass in-game, either to alleviate a threat or clear danger or to accurately pick out a man, switch it to the left or set up something forward down the middle. A set piece threat as well. He'd be good in the air from uh, corners. Now, of course, he has his limitations. He has quite a few limitations, but I'm not about to just, you know, list them and sound like I'm being negative, but I would say his left foot appears to be one of those limitations. And, you know, there's probably a reason the 27-year-old fell out of favour at the city ground, maybe due to the signings of more well-rounded defenders who can offer a bit more on the ball. But, you know, he has a wealth of experience, predominantly at Forest, straddling that uncomfortable margin between Championship and Premier League football. And that's where Sheffield United find ourselves. Let's look at a goalkeeper next. I looked at a keeper on our last one of these, but Carl Rushworth is who I'm going to focus my attention on now. Brighton's Carl Rushworth, a possible loan option for a keeper. This lad name just keeps coming up when linked to Sheffield United. Uh, but... Bart Verbruggen getting injured may mean that Carl Rushworth is involved at Brighton Hove Albion. Who knows? He may not go out on loan to a championship side, or he may to get more valuable first team minutes. He's got a lot of potential and would be an exciting, if short term, solution to Sheffield United's, um, what should we call it? Goalkeeper situation. Carl is 23, had his birthday at the start of July. He's six foot two. Rushworth started his career with Huddersfield Town before being released at 16. He then joined Halifax Town. And you know what? When I think of Halifax and goalkeepers, I think Paddy Kenny. And you know what? If he's half as good as Paddy, I'll be delighted. Before being signed by Brighton and Hove, Albion in 2019, he signed for Worthing on a season-long loan. He made 30 appearances in all competitions for the seventh tier side, and he did well. He's yet to make a first-team appearance for Brighton in a competitive fixture, but he has had four seasons on loan with Warsaw, playing 46 games in 21-2022. Lincoln the following season playing 46 and Swansea last season playing 48. All these appearances are in all competitions. So if we do a little uh, breakdown, he's also represented uh, England under 21 level. But let's look at some stats from those loans before uh, getting the Swansea fans opinions. So Swansea, I mentioned that 48 games, 68 conceded, 11 clean sheets. He kept 13 clean sheets in 46 for Walsall, conceding just 58, and he only conceded, get this, for Lincoln. He played 46, conceded 42, 20 clean sheets. Last season at Swansea, in the league, so from 46 games, it was 65 goals against from 206 shots on target. 68.5 was his post-shot expected goals, which is expected goals based on how likely the keeper is to save the shot. A goal against per 90 of 1.41. Swansea Express, back in March on Twitter last season, wrote, 
Carl Rushworth this season. This was up to the point where he played 39 games. They wrote appearances, 39. Shots faced, 189. Saves made, 132. Goals conceded, 57 clean sheets, 7. And I said in total, he ended up conceding uh, 68. But that's where we were at that point. Player of the season without a doubt, one Swansea fan says. While Swansea fan's Mark said he needs to read the game better. He slows us down when we need a quick throw and he speeds us up when we need a breather. It's his biggest weakness. Also needs to work on kicking accuracy in play too. Get them right and he's a Premier League star. End quote. We've had keepers before who were very, very good keepers, but not necessarily the best at distribution or, or kicking. Uh, whilst Swansea fans Pete said Rushworth, best keeper I've ever seen down Swansea. Future England international for sure. During the season, not the top 20 podcast, which is a very good podcast, shared on their social media. Championship goals prevented. Number one, Carl Rushworth, 6.4. Angus Gunn, 5.7. Mads Hermanson, 4.1. Victor Johansson, 3.5. That was just before the end of the season. Those numbers would change. But that was from a minimum 50% of team minutes played up to that point. Really incredible stats indeed. Carl has one of the highest save percentages in the championship. His throws are ridiculous. I watched a few clips and he can throw it further than some can kick it. Let's talk about Matt Ritchie. Now I must admit, I wasn't that excited about the prospect of Matt Ritchie before I did some research. And the more I've read about him, the more I think I'm gonna like him. Uh, first of all, he's five foot eight, great height for a man, left-footed, Scott-ish uh, midfielder. Or is he a midfielder? Well, yes, he can play there, but he can play in a few other positions, which might mean his versatility is useful. The former Bournemouth and Newcastle man, popular with Eddie Howe, is a set-piece expert who can play in these positions, and he has done in his successful career. Right midfield, he's played 257 times, getting 59 goals and 55 assists. That is clearly where he's enjoyed his football the most. Then left midfield, 66 starts, four goals, 13 assists. He's played left back 49 times with three goals and eight assists. He's played right back twice. He's even been an emergency centre forward once. I thought he'd had more caps, but he's actually only got 16 caps with three goals for Scotland, despite being born in Gosport, which is in Hampshire, uh, his uh, dad is Scottish. Newcastle United statement about the lad. I think it sums him up playing a pivotal role in the club's promotion to the Premier League, known for his dedication, professionalism and leadership. Richie's contributions both on and off the pitch have been invaluable. Former head coach Howe said he's an inspirational character behind the scenes. He's someone who is in training every day. He drives the standards. Really good. We'll get some more quotes later. Let's look at his career breakdown by games played. He played 215 games for Newcastle, 25 goals, 32 assists. Then the most goals he got was 31 for Bournemouth in 142 games, 29 assists there. He played 129 times for Swindon, 28 goals and 28 assists. Played for Dagenham and Redbridge, 41 times, 12 goals, 4 assists. Played for Notts County, 19 times, 3 goals, 1 assist. And Portsmouth, he played 10 times, getting 2 assists. But he has had a lot of injuries. A knee injury, a shoulder injury, an ankle injury, a hamstring injury, a groin injury, a wrist fracture, a thigh problem. He has had quite a few. Let's, though, look at his strengths and weaknesses. I would say he's very good at crossing, taking set pieces, holding onto the ball, does a number of key passes, but some of his passing can go astray, often because he tries the adventurous, he's not that great in the air. His discipline, that's something we'll talk about a little later, his tackling is a little bit offline sometimes. He likes to cross, he likes to play long balls, he plays the ball off the ground often, he doesn't dive into tackles. You know, I watched the extended highlights of a Man United game where he played 75 minutes and he doesn't look slow, despite his advanced years for a footballer. You know, he looks sharp, getting back to defend, good movement on a decoy run for the opening goal, which was very nice. Uh, Eddie Howard said he's very vocal, very enthusiastic. There's other quotes that have said, even in the changing room before the game, he's the one driving the group and that someone who hasn't played as much as he'd like, but he's put the team ahead of his own needs. When you need someone like that, you just hope they will get their reward. I've tried to reward him. Again, this is Eddie Howe speaking, a coach that loves him. With my value being as high as it could be, and desperately wanted to keep him here last year because of those standards he drives and because he is a role model. He gives his experience to players in ways that even I don't know. For him to get that moment and score that goal, it's huge for us and delighted for him. Scored seconds after coming on against Bournemouth. Uh, goal was a bit scrappy, but good movement and good reactions. When you watch him, this is me talking now, it's the end of the quote, uh, you wouldn't think he's 35. All right, and he, he played a decent amount in the Premier League in 21-22, not even that long ago, you know, 14 starts, 1,334 minutes. Some magpies say he has a pathological hatred of corner flags and can be a bit angry. Maybe our new George Bulldog. Richie is a 
a Newcastle Radger. Here's another quote, or uh, in his own words, apparently, an, an angry wee bee. He is someone who will respond to a teammate scoring by slapping them repeatedly about the head. As one fan once memorably put it on uh, Twitter, he believes violence is the answer to praise. He has uh, pictures of sausage rolls on his shin pads because sausage rolls rhymes with goals. I mean, I like the sound of this lad. I also like the sound of, and I hope I'm going to get the pronunciation right, Cody, happy with that, drama, or drama, <laughs> as it could be. But he's a free agent, and it's D-R-A-M-E-H. A free agent, 22 years young, he's five foot nine, great height for a man. He's right-footed, and he's where we focus our attention next. He can play in a few positions. He's mainly a right back, otherwise he could operate a right wing back, left back, even right centre back. His previous clubs leads, but on loan at Birmingham City, Luton and Cardiff. 83 appearances in his career, no goals, nine assists. We'll look at the 23-24 season, 32 appearances. It was only 25 starts in that, so he didn't start all of them. No goals, four assists. And I looked at FOTMOB for an average rating. It was at 6.9, which is not bad. And Cody came from Fulham's Academy, moving to Leeds in 2020. His best spell was for Luton Town in the second half of their successful promotion, promotion season, where he made 16 starts playing right wing back and had an average FOTMOB rating of 7.4, which is better than the last one I read out. Last season, he was at Birmingham City. Not that successful. Birmingham fans, some said he did really well. He was being, you know, used more defensively. I think that's how he would be used for Sheffield United. He wasn't playing right wing back. He was playing right back, and it meant his creativity was not utilised as much. Now a free agent after Leeds released him. Let's look at the season 23-24 compared with uh, Leeds' new man, uh, Jaden Bogle, and then let's look at Bogle's championship season 22-23 to compare. With thanks to J Football 004 at J Football 004 on Twitter, who gave us permission to share this. Give him a follow. When discussing percentiles, remember it's against all championship fullbacks who reached 450 plus minutes. The higher the percentile, the better the player is, or the more that they do with that action. So last season at Birmingham City, he still managed to put good creative numbers, despite me saying earlier he was very much more defensive, providing 0.83 chances per 90, which is, you know, middle of the ground. That's 53rd percentile. If we look at his numbers at Luton, though, he ranked in the 92nd percentile with 1.73 chances per 90, showing when he's played further forward in a more attacking role, he's more of a threat. Ability to cross from deep on the head of a target striker, something we could utilise perhaps with, uh, you know, one of our tall strikers like Kiefer Moore. Uh, both this season, well, last season we could say, and, and Luton, he was very successful when it came to dribbling, taking on his man, ranking in the 84th percentile in 22, uh, sorry, in 23-24, and in 22-23, the 87th percentile. His success rate is also in the 85th percentile last season, which show he is he's taking on players often, and he is succeeding. In both seasons, he completed a high number of blocks, clearances, tackles, and recoveries. It's, it's an improvement in not being dribbled past. He clearly got better at that from the time between Luton and Birmingham. And one of the weaknesses, his passing accuracy, not, not great. 48th percentile, ranked 27th percentile for missed controls, showing he is uncomfortable on the ball. But, you know, some areas he's just slightly stronger. All players have that, you know. Defensive awareness, that's something else, you know, more of an area that he can improve on, especially when crosses are coming into the box, clear the cross, letting the ball run past him and then, Lean to a simple tap in. I, I saw him do that. Not the most comfortable ball player ever. Hard worker, smart player, very versatile. If we compare him with Jaden Bogle for a creativity, uh, Drama created a similar level of chances to Bogle in the 23 24 season. But when you look at him at Luton, he created nearly double the amount of chances per 90. Bogle is only slightly more impressive at taking on his man, recording around 0.22 more successful take ons in both those seasons. But his success rate is 21% lower than Cody showing. So you know, it might be in some aspects more effective than Bogle. In terms of game improvement, both players rank at a similar level with Bogle attempting four passes less per 90 and receiving fewer touches, three in fact, than Cody. In the 23-24 season, Cody compared to Jaden, was, was a much less progressive player, but again, playing in a more attacking role at Luton, he progressed the ball through passing at a similar level. However, Bogle remained much higher in his carrying numbers defensively. Cody had more actions, Bogle having a 48% success rate, Cody 47. So they're very, very similar. Overall, when looking at Cody in attacking side, his creative numbers are better than Bogle's and still not much worse than the low end. Bogle progresses the ball slightly more. However, a drama produces more defensive actions. But again, this would be due to him playing in a side which would be defending more compared to Bogle. I've seen people question and suggest Cody as a potential signing. You know, he's free. 
we probably need another right back. We've got Shackleton, we've got Sam Curtis, we've got Femi Sariki, and uh, we've got Sashtev, haven't we? Trying to remember all of them. But whether they're all ready for the championship, I don't know. When playing for Luton, Cody for the attacking numbers shone in an attacking role and his defending remained at a similar level. Last season, he has become slightly better in defence with Birmingham being dribbled past less while still putting up good creative numbers, just not great. Uh, maybe his creativity around the edge of the box, his ability to cross the ball in from wide, that could be something. He can overlap. He's probably better going further forward. You know, Bogle was as well in that more forward advanced position. Some said Bogle would have been a great right midfielder. Well, Cody, his defensive awareness probably needs to go up a level to be that perfect. Defender, uh, what do you think of the players I've just mentioned there? Let me know in the comments.